first. Yeah. You good? All right. Take permission. Sorry. Uh, I will call this April 11th, 2022, Sylvania Board of Education meeting to order. Um, call the roll. Tammy. I'm here. Jill. Here. Kim. Here. Julie. Here. And Greg. Here. All right. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All year round, we appreciate our board members. Ms. Hoffman, all year round. Dr. Motley, with you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Feller. Good evening, everyone. Um, here to share uh, my superintendent's report, I want to first start with thanking the individuals who participated in our strategic plan retreat that took place on Tuesday. Last week it was an all-day event. Actually, Ms. Johnson and Ms. Conklin were, Conklin were both there to participate in the event. We had over 53 participants. Um, we had members from SEA and OPSI, um, our organizations in the district. They selected their participants to um, give their feedback and input about our strategic plan and have a voice at a table. We also had other internal stakeholders, our administrators were there, um, people were represented from all our departments. It was also so nice to see so many external stakeholders. For example, we had the president of Lord's University, we had representation from Sageard, we had the chamber that was also represented, City of Sylvania, and again, as I mentioned, two board members. We were able to do some work around our mission, vision, goals, and beliefs for the district for the next five years. And continuing our work this morning, our strategic plan facilitators will also, they were trained so that now they can work in small groups with the identified goals. And there are five focus areas in which the participants at the retreat identified. And the five areas that will really support student learning growth and student success were teaching, learning, and innovation, um, which includes technology, uh, communication, culture, and climate, social, emotional um, health, and mental well-being of our students and faculty, in addition to our facilities and also physical responsibility. And I don't know, um, ladies, Jill, Kim, if you want to add anything about the day or your experience from the strategic plan retreat? It was a great day. I was very, um, it was my first time. Uh, it was my first time going through um, strategic planning and it was a great experience. I thought that the community was, it was great seeing so many people from the community and um, mixed in with the, the, the folks from the, um, from the district and I had a great table, we had great discussion, it was very interesting, and I really enjoyed it. I also thought it was um, an interesting day, as well as to add to what both of you have said, uh, there were, did you mention there were a couple students I there? did not, yeah. go okay. for it. I, I, I should have been listening closer. But, <laughs> um, there were, um, I think, three students there, a freshman and a junior and a senior, I believe, or yeah. something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it amazed me when they spoke how, one, how articulate they are, how well informed they are. Um, I felt like I was sitting there listening to an adult in their 30s. I mean, they, they were awesome. Um, I thought the mix of people was wonderful um, because everybody had their own um, experiences, life experiences, but yet there were so many commonalities when it came to mm -hmm. talking about what do we want for this district, what do we want for the kids, um, and, and it was just, I mean, it was just amazing. My, my table was made up of um, myself and grounds and, um, I forget who else, but anyways. Um, it, yes, yeah. Tim. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it it was yeah it was a diverse was a good, group, but it was wonderful. It was a good mix of people that lived in Sylvania, that didn't live in Sylvania, that just worked for the district. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that went through Sylvania schools yeah. or 
came back to live in Sylvania for the school. So it was a really good mix of people, I think. It, yes. was, it was interesting. Yeah. Well, thank you for adding your comments. Um, I think it was a very successful day. We still have <coughs> next steps to follow through. So stay tuned. More information will be forthcoming. Um, I will say this uh, entire past weekend, boy, I was a Southview person. Uh, Friday night, I was at the Southview softball game with the Lady Cougars. They were awesome. Took some great picks, had some fun. I brought the rain with me, and then as soon as I left, it kind of like dried up, so I don't know what that's about. <coughs> Um, also, Saturday, I was over at Southview for uh, Dance for a Chance, where the students supported the National Alliance on Mental Illness. That was fantastic. Yesterday, I was with uh, not only Mr. Feller, but Ms. Addington, because their children were recognized in the National Honor Society induction um, ceremony and the honor court ceremony. So I had a chance to participate in that. That was wonderful to see so many of our students from the graduating class doing so many wonderful things. Um, we didn't see each other necessarily face to face, but I was tweeting and so we were connecting and I was congratulating folks. So it was a great, um, it was a wonderful event and it felt like spring and it felt like typical, normal, back to school stuff. We kind of missed out on some of that last year, but it was a great event. And more importantly for our students to hear what they're going on to do next as far as collegiate aspirations. Uh, we had some folks going into the career world of cosmetology. There was someone going into the reserve, like just across the gamut. It, it really did my heart well, and I'm sure did our parents' hearts well um, too. And I'm going to end that uh, Friday I learned, but I was sworn to secrecy, but it was released today that each of our 12 Sylvania schools earned a Purple Star Award uh, from the Ohio Department of Education. The Purple Star Award recognizes schools that honor and support the unique needs of military connected youth and their families. Um, this year, uh, they announced 263 schools that earned this designation and members of the class of 2022 each of our 12 buildings earned recognition, so that's something we're very proud of as we support our military families and their children. And that concludes my superintendent's report. Great, thank you. Paul, well, it's the first opportunity for public participation on agenda items. And seeing none, we are back with you, Dr. Miley. Thank you, Mr. Feller. Item 4.1, I recommend approval. We have two gifts uh, being donated to our district. One, we have a flute to the McCord Junior High School band, and also we have a donation from the F3 group to install pull-up bars at our schools, outside locations, of course, and that's about a value of estimated to be about $1,000. So thank you to those two, um, the individual and the F3 group. A little A second. Any discussion? Uh, Julie? Yes. Jill? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Kim? Yes. Graham Greg? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I recommend item 4.2 for approval. This is a overnight field trip for the Strandingham Elementary staff members to escort approximately 100 students to Camp Store in Jackson, Michigan. This will take place in September of next school year. I'll second. Any discussion? Yeah, I think going for less time than they usually do, it seems really short. Just the 28th through the 30th. Don't they usually go longer than that? They usually go for about a week. I know they... And that's like only one full day. I know we changed some dates as early as today. I'll double check on that. Because the one even previously was in November. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they usually go all five days. Of yeah, I mean, it seems you're going to get there on the 28th, yeah. spend the night, you have one day, and then you leave. Yeah, let me double check. And it's such a fun trip. Like, I love that they do this. Yeah, I went out to visit there once. So it was really cool. Um, let me double check that. We're far enough out for this change of dates. Okay. But I'll check with Kyle. Thank you, Mr. Zero. Any other discussion? Uh, Julie? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Jill? Yes. Kim? Yes. Um, yes. Thank you. I recommend item 4.3 for approval. It is a <coughs> agreement 
with our district and the Grand Valley State University. This agreement is used to place student teachers or teachers that need field experience in our buildings. I'll second. Any discussion? All right, Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Jill? Yes. And yes. Okay. Thank you. I recommend item 4.4, the high school handbook <laughs> amendment, second read, in regards to our vape sensor policy. I'll move approval. I'll second. Any discussion? All right, Julie? Yes. Jill? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Kim? Yes. And yes. Thank you. I recommend item 4.5 for approval. This is a policy amendment for a second read for search and seizure. Um, more specifically, policy 5771. I'll move approval. I'll second. Anyone else want to move? Any discussion? <laughs> uh, apparently. Uh, Julie? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Jill? Yes. Kim? Yes. And I'm yes. Okay. Thank you. I recommend item 4.6. It is a policy for our smart sensors. This is a brand new policy as these uh, sensors are being installed in our buildings. This policy number is 7440.01. I'll move for approval. A second. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? I had to get in there. <laughs> I'll just chime in really quick. If you all vote for it, thank you. Uh, thanks to Mark and Casey for leading this charge with uh, the VAPE sensors, which is essentially better help our students make better decisions. Um, it was shared in student notes, but communication has gone out to families. Some of you may have already seen it as parents. Um, if approved here shortly, um, hope to have them all installed and ready to go this week. And both high schools will start at the same time with the goal being next Monday. So thank you for your support. Um, what, time, what type of feedback are you getting from parents? I've only received one email that Mark shared with me from a parent who was also in the medical field was very painful. Oh, wow. the, the damaging effects that vapes have on kids and lungs and the rest of the body. And it had, had a student that had, obviously at Northview that had some concerns and has been discussing with the parent and was very thankful that they're good. That's, That's the only thing I've seen. So. Good. That's good news. Good. Any other discussion? All right. Greg, yes. Jill? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Kim? Yep. Julie? Yes. Thank you. I recommend item 4.7. This is an agreement to work with the Northwest Ohio Educational Service Center to provide additional services for a student with special needs to be placed in their facility for the remainder of the school year. I'll move approval. I'll second. Any discussion? All right, Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Julie? Yes. Jill? Yes. And Greg's yes. Okay. Thank you. Item 4.8, I recommend approval. This is regarding land at Stranahan Elementary. We're asking the board to provide clear authority on the $10,700 purchase of the price of the land, which will also include $4,000 to be allocated um, for the land and $6,700 for a fence and any additional items if needed. And please note the parcel is six one hundred of an acre. A slither. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll second. Are they putting up the fence or mm -hmm. are they? They are. They're going to replace the fence? Mm -hmm. It's and all included. Is So is it, it's 4000 for the land? Correct. So is that, we, we don't have to go to the whole? Correct. Okay. Do we, this, the resolution, it, it acts as for clear authority. Did we already vote on this and it just wasn't, I, I was kind of thrown by that. We did not vote on this. This okay. is the first time you're voting. So I know on we've it. it's been before us to consider. I mean, we've talked about it, but I I was wondering what the clear authority meant. Like, had there been unclear authority, or am I just reading too much? <laughs> you know, I'm going to have to rely on it. I was just going to say, as an attorney with that expertise, well, I would I'm just love like, to okay, know. Was there unclear clear authority? Me? That's not a term, not term I'm familiar with. That's no. interesting because that, that is the terminology that. from our legal counsel. Okay. I lifted it from. Mm -hmm. His document. Well, so. I hope this is clear enough. <laughs> I, hope it's, I could put unclear. No, yeah, right. I thought there was a thing, a difference. So I rely okay. on your expertise. Well, no clear authority. 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 Unless it's clear, unquestioned. 
I'm only going to approve vague authority at this point. <laughs> Just is it, plain is it, authority for Is me. it maybe just clarifying <laughs> the 4,000 versus 6,700 land versus no, fence? I, 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 is that a simple thing? probably just this Greg Arnold. Yes. No. It's probably just Greg's language when he signed it over, that's all. Okay. Clear authority. I'm clear authority. Next time, authority. Good all question. Right. Thank you. Any other discussion? All right. Julie? Yes. Greg? Yes. Um, Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. And Jill? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Lastly, we have item 4.9, which is for our school district to enter into a two-year contract <coughs> with Life Touch Studios uh, to do photograph photographic services, school pictures, yearbook, all those memorable documents that we have through Life Touch. Do we have a motion? I'll move for a I'll second. <clears throat> Any discussion? Is this, I assume this is just a We've had this in the past. It's just kind of a really yes. kind of thing. Yeah, no Tim. Cost to the yeah. It's a, just an awareness piece. We've approved it. We had a four-year contract with them back in 2000. That'd be 17. Um, so we had a committee that Amy was a part of, some teachers, administrators, HR, whole team members. A few concerns. Um, I think we've got them addressed, but we don't want to sign a four-year again. We're just going to go two years to see if they can have to address. Is Okay. Is this an exclusive contract, or are there other providers that we work with also? Because I know that there have been other providers in the past. There have been other providers in the past. We've had communi communications with, what, four to five of the other other ones involved. The big issue, specifically at our junior high and high schools, is those other, Life Touch was one of the few who can do pictures before school, like at our kickoffs at the junior high and high school. Some of the other ones, either didn't have the personnel, it was a shutdown, it was a training period, so that was a big reason why we're sticking with them, as, as well as some other reasons. But it's exclusive to only being school photography, not sports photography. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other discussion? All right, Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Jill? Yes. And Greg? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to human capital. Um, and I will share that um, Mr. Tyberski will be announcing these at the next board member or board meeting. He wanted one more time for oh, me to, to <laughs> if he wants to be yeah. at the table, yeah, he can be. be I'm yeah. fine either way. I don't know. He's trying to hide back there in the back tonight, but he promised me he was taking notes to see how this uh, moved along. Yeah, except that when the table, we're going to ask a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> So item 5.1 through 5.7, I am asking on a consent approval uh, basis for our agenda items. Number 5.1 is a re resolution to suspend an educator, Dale Buzdecker, without pay. Item 5.2, uh, license substitute teachers. You'll see a number of those. They keep rolling in, and we keep inviting them in, and we keep using them. So thank you to our new teachers. Um, item 5.3, we recommend the non-renewal of the licensed substitute teachers listed below. Item 5.4, we recommend approval of the two folks indicated there for an unpaid leave of absence. Item 5.5, we have a number of resignations listed that we ask your approval. Item 5.6, You'll see several teachers there. Um, we are asking for some pay for these teachers to do work as it relates to summer school with Edgenuity uh, for both general ed and special education staff. Item 5.7, we are seeking approval for extra duty pay, of which you will notice um, based on enrollment, we have a number of teachers there slated to teach our summer jumpstart program. And then again, I ask approval of items 5.1 through 5.7 on a consent agenda basis. I will approve on a consent agenda basis items 5.1 through 5.7. A second. All right, is there any discussion? Um, I just have a question. That's a long list of substitute teacher no, 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 is that? Yeah, I kind of had the same question. <laughs> sure, Josh, would you like to speak to that? So I'll ask the question again, never tell uh, it's, it's a kind of a long list of substitute non renewals. Yes, yeah, so I'd have to get the law exactly to, do, to tell you the wording on there, but we do this every year when our substitutes reach close to the 60 day mark and close to the 120 day mark because if they go beyond that, 
Um, it then requires us to not use them again next year as long-term sub. We have to issue them contract. So it happens every year in the April board meeting that the substitute teachers that hit the 60 and 120 day close marks have to then be nominated. Okay. So we're, we're not necessarily losing a bunch no. of substitute? Okay. No. Okay. They can still sub in our district, but we have to non-renew them because they went past the 60 days. If they would do another long-term next year, we'd have to grant them like a first year contract. Okay. So you, you non-renew them and then they can still sub on a, on a daily basis. Okay. So this is just kind of a procedural thing? Yes. Okay. Got it. <coughs> All right. Is there any other discussion? All right, Julie. Yes. Jill. Yes. Tammy. Yes. Kim. Yes. And Greg. Yes. See, Josh, you got a question anyway. Look at that. <laughs> I, I knew the answer. Though. <laughs> <laughs> I would ask more if you were the table. <laughs> <laughs> the table. I had asked the same question. Are <laughs> <laughs> we sure we want to lose these people? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. I am recommending item 6.1 through 6.5 on a consent agenda basis. Item 6.1. We're seeking approval for a number of classified personnel changes. Item 6.2, we have a classified resignation. Um, item 6.3, we have a classified new hire. Item 6.4, we have a couple of individuals that we are asking up to a certain amount of hours to help with the um, transition of a number of transportation related responsibilities and you'll see as noted to help us with Transfinder Plus, added technology, potential writing, routing changes, which includes our summer swing program, in addition to um, routing for the fall. The summer program is something that's relatively new for our folks. We did it last year one time, and some things actually were not handled in the most effective way, and we want to improve upon that. So we're asking for additional hours for those individuals. Item 6.5. Uh, we have Gloria Nixon, who will be retiring after 32 years of service. Thank you, Gloria. Um, may you be proud of all the work you've done and the difference you have made for our students here in Sylvania. You will be missed, but we understand that it's your time to move on to the next part of your journey. So we thank you for your service for all of these years. And again, I recommend item 6.6 .6 on a consent agenda basis the previous from note or the previous items mentioned. A move approval on a consent agenda basis item six point one three six point five. I'll second. <laughs> Any discussion? I have a quick question on um which one am I looking at? Uh, the six point four additional hours. Are those over the summer? Is that what you said? Yes. Oh, okay. These so employees lot, typically are nine month employees. And okay. so they would be in done as soon as school's out. So we're going to employ them over the summer to shore up some things in transportation. Okay. Anything else? <clears throat> All right, Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Jill? Yes. Greg? Yes. Thank you. Um, on a consent agenda basis, we recommend approval of items 7.1 and 7.2, supplemental positions for the remainder of the school year, and then we have athletic volunteers as well, and we recommend approval. I'll move for approval on a consent agenda basis, items 7.1 and 7.2. I'll second. Any discussion? Hasn't Danny been doing this all year? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think their season's done. Isn't it? Yeah, I guess what I thought. It was, yeah. Yeah. it was a miss. Okay. That's correct. It's Josh. Previous. <laughs> <laughs> Quote unquote. Previous. Yeah. All right. Any other discussion? All right. Greg. Yes. So Jill. Yes. Tammy. Yes. Kim. Yes. Julie. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, we are at board committee reports. Kim? I have nothing. Julie? Yeah. Tammy? Nothing. Okay. All right. Um, do you have anything other than transportation? A lot. <laughs> you want to go first? This was. All right, go ahead. <laughs> this, this was meeting week for me, All I right. think, this past week. Um, okay. We'll start with um, SSPO met um, Friday and very interesting meeting. Um, it's, they talked primarily about, um, well, actually the guest speaker was Ray Holston, um, and he talked a lot about his ideas for improving um, nutrition at the schools um, post-COVID, 
and bringing in some more variety, quality, etc. He also mentioned some ideas for the high schools, um, such as grab and go meals um, and a coffee station. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and basically, that was probably the highlight of that meeting coming out of that. And um, OPC um, was primarily a discussion about transportation and what we're doing about it. Um, and uh, also about um, needing supervision for the for the kids for some of the drop times because apparently they're they mentioned Highland they get to school they can't drop the kids for 10 minutes and so by the time they drop the kids they um, really don't have time for breakfast and so they're running down the hall with a donut in their hand um, so they we talked about that and workflow for the cafeteria um, and parking at Northview, primarily, um, being an issue. And tomorrow, tomorrow, this is a tomorrow meeting. Um, I'm going to be meeting with the new, newly hired executive director of SCS, who is um, Sophia Lloyd, and her and I are meeting to have over coffee to meet each other, I guess. <laughs> um, so, it, more on that later, I guess. Yep. And the strategic planning committee we already talked about. That was my week. A lot of meetings. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I just have an update on transportation. Jill and I were at the transportation meeting. Uh, was it last week, I think? Mm -hmm. um, and just a couple highlights. So there was, um, obviously, you know, we all know transportation has been an issue for a while. So um, they came up with, with uh, the beginnings of a plan to try and address it. Um, and it's still in the works, so you know, I don't want to say too much. Um, but I, you know, one thing that came that we talked about was just kind of in general, we have 67 bus routes and on a regular basis, only 62 drivers. So on a daily basis, we're five drivers short. Um, and I know the, the um, transportation office staff, they drive in the mornings, midday and afternoon, so everybody's kind of pitching in when they can. Um, I mean, obviously we all do that, but it was just I didn't realize how many were short on a daily basis, so that was interesting. But um, some of the suggestions that came out were um, to kind of implement a two-tier pickup and drop-off. So like in the mornings, you know, go do half of the routes, I believe, and then farthest out. Yeah, the furthest out, bring them, and then do the second tier, the closest ones, and bring them. And what that will allow them to do is if there's someone that calls off, then you can have someone from the second tier fill in in the first tier. So that'll help, you know, um, allow us to have substitutes to be able to cover the routes, which I thought was really good. Um, we have consolidated routes. I believe we've consolidated 12 routes um, already by, you know, um, optimizing and, and the buses and, and the space that we have. So that was good. Um, they also talked about one of the suggestions was to do more group pickups in neighborhoods. So as opposed to maybe stopping at every single house, you know, having kind of a centralized location for, for um, pickups that are close. So I think that'll help um, optimize. Um, Haven't we already done that though? I mean, that was years ago. They're stopping at every house? They are. I can tell you on my street, I think there's four stops on my little cul-de-sac. They do? Yeah. So that's going backwards because we yeah. fix yeah, that. I, 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 they don't in my neighborhood. neighborhood. They don't in my neighborhood. They don't in my neighborhood. They either, stop at so once. That's why I asked. But they said yeah, they do the, majority of the majority of the stops, like in cul-de-sacs or neighborhoods, they're stopping mm -hmm. house to house. And, and so I, I understand if it's like a kindergarten because <coughs> you don't yeah. want them, you know, walking down the street, but, you know, older kids, mm -hmm. I mean, we had stopped that years ago. We my, consolidated stops. My bus stop is about five houses down. When my kids were in kindergarten, we they walked down there. We, I mean, I walked with them, but yeah. I, 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 yeah. How does that get determined? How is it some neighborhoods have a 
bus stop with many people, and others are stopping. Yeah, all I can imagine is maybe because Greg's neighborhood is newer, and so maybe right. they were newer routes. There maybe, maybe kids were more, and right, because my neighborhood is old, and right. there's been established bus stops ever since I've lived there. Yeah. That's one of the conversations that we do have some established stops, so that regardless to um, what grade level you're attending, that the stop yeah. is the bus stop, and it's always been the bus stop yeah. on the yeah. corner of here and here, and other areas we have um, things that don't work that way and it's four houses pick up four houses pick up four houses pick up so or they can all walk to the yeah one we're working on that and and truly it's going to be i think a partnership and an understanding not only from our families but also our bus drivers too um, to make sure we have this is where the stop is and walk to the stop because it will help us it will help us reduce routes it's you're not going down a pathway for one kid to find out down that road that the kid isn't there, the student isn't there, so you've wasted time. If you're picking up five to eight kids at one stop, if one student is there or not, you still have other kids to pick up. So it's good to know that that's something that was done yeah, in the past. I guess over time it's just kind of morphed itself into something else. Yeah, so I'm sure as we get further along in the plan, we'll have a, a more formal presentation. When, when are we putting this plan in place? I mean, are we going to be all set for the We're going to be talking about some of that tonight because it has to deal with MOUs. Okay. Yeah. I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the plan is to have this in place by August for the like start to, of next school year. Yeah. I, I, get, I didn't want to I've been push, the board. I've been pushing on the committee that we need to get this done in time for mm -hmm. school to start next year, for sure. He can say that. I can yeah. say that. I mean, yeah. Yeah. We'll when be things are going about that well, too. August is tough with transportation. Right. Going into it with the problems that we're coming out of this year with, that's a disaster. Yeah. I will say that I had the opportunity to go over to the bus garage recently and meet Jim, and I was really, I mean, very encouraged. He's got a really good energy and a really good, um, he's very optimistic. Um, <clears throat> he had taken the time to look back on some of the presentations we've gotten. He had watched the presentation we got back in October. The one we're all in Mount Strathover? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he watched that and he... Really. Um, no, not happening. Yeah, he, and he was very... He, he thought that was a little bit over the top and felt like we bit. had options. <laughs> and he felt like we had options that could be explored that... And I, I felt very positive after meeting him that he, he had some really good energy and really good ideas and so I'm I have yeah. all the confidence in the world that Greg's going to be able to figure this out. Right. It's, it's not me. It's not me. It's Jim. Um, you know, given that presentation that we had last October, I feel really good about what they presented. Well, because I, I can't imagine that we were ever going to approve no. that new plan. No. That was insane. Yeah. Okay. So I, I feel good about what they presented. Obviously, they're still working on it and fine-tuning it and whatnot. So, like I said, I, I would think hopefully soon we have a... A Maybe more detailed presentation. May, June, Before then. Before May? It might even be next. next it might be. Our, it might. Okay. It depends on our conversations tonight. Okay. Yep. So that's what I have. Okay. Um, so this is the second opportunity for public participation for non agenda items. And seeing none, I will move that we go into executive session for the purposes of. Was it employment of a public official? Employment of a public employee and also um, contract negotiations. Yes, contract negotiations. Second. All right. Uh, we'd roll call, right? Greg, yes. Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Joe? Yes. And there will be no action taken after executive. Thank you. Cool.